Hello, welcome back to my workshop. You may remember seeing the 1084S that I had in the Atari VCS repair. If not, go and watch that. It was a local pickup from Nottingham and I paid a really good price for it. The only problem that it had was the power button is a little bit sticky. Um, I did reflow the RCA connectors, but mainly the power button is sticky. Now, looking around for a replacement power button, we're looking about £25 and it was more than I wanted to spend. I did some searching and I found a guide to using these um, Kennel PSD1 switches and they were put upside down and they'd use like thick copper to secure it to the PCB from the parts at the front. These are, are like, I bought four of these for £6 so they're a lot easier to find than the originals which like say £24-£25. So I thought I should be able to adapt this and make some sort of support bracket using my 3D printer. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to design a support for this and fit it into this 1084S. I've opened up the 1084S and we're going to look at the switch. So my switch is really sticky. You can see that it won't press, it won't stay in place. and then sometimes it won't unlock. My idea is to use one of these switches, a Canal PSD-1. From the front, I'm pretty sure that it will work, but uh, obviously we can't put it in that way. The solder points on the bottom don't line up. So we're gonna to have to put it in that way. If we put it in that way, we'll have to solder wires from the switch through to the PCB. The biggest issue with this is not is how do we support the switch once it's in. So I'm going to design a 3D printed part which will screw into here. So on the back, these two points are earthed ground for the front of the switch. So we could use those for screw holes. We then have these three plastic pegs. Again, we could use for some way of securing the 3D printed part. And then these two points there and there are the actual switches. So at the moment they should be open. And now they should be closed. So that is the same as these switches. So we would just solder these two to those two uh, from, from the top coming down to the sides. So that is my idea. So I need to uh, take this switch out and do some measurements. So I'm just going to start by reflowing the solder. And we'll use the Dura tool. I think I need to pop this off. That is our switch. So step one, yes, it fits. So now that needs to go in. Somewhere just there. And then solder the wires from the other side. So that is our old switch. And if we put them side by side, we can see that from the metal parts that they are both the same. I need to measure the difference between the base of that switch and this little knob where it goes into the PCB. And that will be the thickness of the support piece that I need to make. So that will be the first measurement then it will be getting that so that this screws into that and then looking at, at what we've got on the bottom as far as securing it. So like I said, we've got that hole. We could use those holes but they're a little bit close to the screws. We could definitely use those two. Uh, I'll have to see what I can come up with. And we need to leave room for our 
new mains cable to go be soldered in and go over the top. I've printed out another bracket so I can show you how I put all that together and I went and got some crimps so that we can crimp onto the switch rather than soldering. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to tap the plastic and then this slides on like that and you see that it's all sits underneath and we've got the space for the tie wrap so we can put the screw into the threads on the switch so there we go that's on there it's nice and sturdy let's put our tie wrap through so that will just add some extra support So there we have our crimps. I'm going to put a bit of shrink wrap over the end as well. Okay, so that's our new switch, our new wires. I'm going to, I'm going to pop the wires on. So there we have our new switch. I have just uh, tinned the ends, so let's get these two in first. I'm just doing this first so that the switch doesn't get in the way. Right, that is that. Uh, so now it's just getting our screws back in. Okay. So there we have our switch, we've got the crimps on the connectors now, shielding around the switches, everything is in place. Let's do one final test of the connections on the back. That is good. So now it's just a matter of putting the case back together again. All right, let's have a quick look closer up. So there you can see the three screws that I put in, the solder for the new wires. There is our new switch, which is on the 3D printed mount. Everything fits in perfectly. The wires are protected uh, with heat shrink, soldered straight to the board. So overall I am very happy. The switch is working nicely. So let's power this on. We have our green light 
and it switches off. No trouble. So there we go. I've got a design that will allow us to fit this switch into this 1084S with very little change. I just had to enlarge two of the holes on the PCB that were just holding the switch in. They weren't actually part of the circuit. So nice and easy. And as you can see, it's working just great. Just here we have a sneak peek of what's coming up next, the next big video. This is just a, a quickie. Uh, so we'll see me working on the MSX. So thank you for watching. Just hit 1,000 subscribers. I can't thank you all enough for watching me fumble about in my workshop. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.